This video is called Why Cells Divide. It's the first video for Chapter 10, which covers a process called mitosis, which is the process that most of your cells in your body are going through when it's coming to division. Um, now, in order to talk about this chapter, we have to start off with the whole reason why. Well, why on earth do the cells in our bodies divide? Uh, there are a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons is that there's a whole host of problems that come along with the cell becoming too large. So let's say we've got uh, two cells. We've got a smaller cell and then a much larger cell. Now, the nucleus in both of these cells would still be roughly the same size. I mean, there's no reason for the nucleus to really get any bigger. But uh, as the cell gets larger, this is going to create more of a tax on the DNA that's inside of the nucleus. If you remember what the DNA codes for, it's all the different processes that help run the cell. So for example, if the cell needs new information to build more ribosomes, or say it needs information to help it expand and grow, or to help it you know, consume more resources, those are all things that are going to tax the DNA, and since the DNA itself in the nucleus doesn't get any larger, uh, it can become a problem for the cell. Your book actually uses a pretty good comparison in likening the nucleus to a library. You know, if you have a small library, say like the one that we have at school, um, that's fine because our school population is relatively small. But let's say you took the little tiny Penarjal library and you took it to a school where there's now, say, 600 students in a class instead of 600 students in the whole school. You know, Mrs. Lavenberg would end up running out of books. There would be no more things to lend out to people because it would be too much of a drag on her limited resources. That's basically what's happening here. You know, the DNA only has limited resources. As the cell gets larger, it begins to tax those resources, and eventually it becomes too much. So our number one issue here is size. So we're going to make a list of problems that end up leading the cell to division. Uh, the first one of these problems is just the size of the cell. So as we talked about on the previous page, as the size gets too big, that becomes an issue. Uh, another one is transporting things inside of the cell. If you remember exocytosis from last chapter, that's the whole process of things leaving the cell. That process is going to take longer as the cell gets bigger. So the way that uh, you should think about this is that as the cell gets larger, everything that's happening inside of the cell takes more time. And when it comes back to exocytosis, it's not just the cell getting rid of cell products, but it's also the cell getting rid of waste and other things that it doesn't need. And as those processes slow down, things like that can start to build up inside of the cell, and that can be very bad for it. So the last thing we have to talk about is this concept called surface-to-volume ratio. If you look at the little cubes on the right, and I promise I'm not going to turn this into a math lesson, but um, if you look at the little cubes on the right, this one has like a side that's two units on each end. So we got like two here, two here, two here. This one doubles in size up to four. This one gets larger with six on each side. And then finally this one with eight. So what we're looking at here is what happens to this surface area to volume ratio as the cubes get bigger. Because the same thing is happening to the cell as the cell gets larger. It's just easier to mathematically do this if it's a cube, because that way every side is an exact size, whereas the cell, you know, being kind of round, it's harder to calculate. But uh, surface area to volume ratio that's high is good for the cell. That means that there's going to be enough surface area around the outside to make up for the volume that's inside of the cell. Uh, to make this simple, the surface area is talking about the exterior of the cell, like the cell membrane. And that's where everything's coming into and out of the cell. Remember we talked about endocytosis, exocytosis, we talked about the process of proteins in the membrane that allow things in and out of the cell. That all takes membrane space, that all takes surface area for that to happen. The volume is the inside of the cell. It's all the stuff in there that's either producing waste products or good products that the cell has to get rid of. What ends up happening is that ratio starts off high. So there's plenty of outside space to use to export the uh, products in a small cell. But then as the cell gets larger, there's less and less outside space 
in relation to the inside space of the cell. So you can see when we double it up to four, this number gets cut in half, down to only one and a half uh, for our surface area to volume ratio. Then at, at six, it's down just to one, and then at eight, it's below one. So it's, you know, three quarters. And uh, the problem here is as this number gets lower and lower, the cell has less membrane space to use with which to get rid of waste products and get things out of the cell. So our final one here, just to give you a point on our list, is the idea of surface area to volume ratio. Surface area, and we'll just say one, two. So remember the surface area, this is like the membrane space. And then the volume, this is the inside of the cell. Just to put those in terms that, uh, that we're thinking about when it comes to actually tying it into the cell. Not so much thinking about it as a math concept. Uh, just remember one more time, those cubes were used because a cube is even on all sides. It's much easier to calculate for than the idea of a cell. But it's still the same concept. You know, As a cell gets bigger over time, that surface area to volume ratio ends up going down. And ultimately, that's a problem. So as always... Uh, thank you for watching, and we're going to build on this concept all chapter when we go through and talk about division and how it happens inside your cells.